Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, my kitchen table, our kitchen table. Uh, I'm here with my family, and uh, what we're going to do now is an act of all age children's worship um, to think about the story of Good Friday. So if you tuned in a little bit before half past, you might have seen Jesus here. This is Jesus. And what we're going to be doing is just telling the story of Jesus's life, um, this last day of his earthly life. It was a very difficult day and it's a very sad story, but we're going to be remembering that together. Um, so Guy's going to be telling the story. Um, he's going to be reading out the story and after each section, we're going to have four sections, there's going to be the opportunity to pray together um, and think about um, well, there'll be a theme to think about with each section. Um, so as we begin, um, I hope you might have a candle and uh, we're going to begin by lighting a candle together. The Lord is here. His spirit, His spirit is, is with us. us. So let's light this candle. We light this candle to remind us that God is with us and his light shines on us. So let's pray. Lord God, it's a sad day today because we're remembering the saddest day of your life. So we light a candle because even when things are really sad and difficult, you still give us hope. Help us to hold the hope alongside the sadness today. Amen. So let's turn to the story. On the night before Jesus died, he had a special meal with his friends. And when they finished the meal, they walked to a garden to pray. It was quiet and dark in the garden. Suddenly, torches flared among the trees. People were coming. Soldiers with swords and Judas, one of Jesus' special friends, was leading them. Jesus, he said, and he kissed Jesus on the cheek. It was a signal to the soldiers. They took Jesus prisoner. His friends tried to help, but Jesus didn't want any fighting. So they all ran off and left him. Peter was scared, but he followed the soldiers. They took Jesus straight to the men who wanted to kill him. Peter stood outside in the cold. Aren't you one of the prisoner's friends? Someone asked him. Not me, Peter answered. Three times he said he did not know Jesus. He was so scared. But afterwards he was very sorry and so ashamed that he burst into tears. One of the worst things about uh, this last day of Jesus' life was that his friends really, really let him down. Um, Judas betrayed Jesus. He told the soldiers where Jesus was, which was the very worst thing he could have done. And even Peter, who was Jesus, one of Jesus' very best friends, uh, three times he told people who asked that he didn't even know Jesus. I think this must have hurt Jesus so badly. Can you imagine how he felt when his friends let him down? Uh, I wonder whether we ever let other people down, whether we know that there are times when we've hurt other people or made them really sad. Um, sometimes we have sad memories, don't we? And um, I wonder whether you have gathered some rosemary. I did put it on the sheet. If you haven't got any, it doesn't matter. This is what rosemary looks like. And sometimes we use rosemary um, as it's a, it's a herb that we use. It's associated with memories, kind of sad and happy memories. Memories to do with people that we really love, but maybe sad memories about things that have happened that make us feel sad. So I wonder whether um, you might, if you've got some rosemary, hold it in your hand. If you haven't got any, it doesn't matter. But let's just take a moment of quiet. 
and in the, in the stillness, I want you to think about whether there's anybody that you need to forgive or perhaps anybody that you need to say sorry to. Let's pray. Jesus, help us to be able to say sorry and to forgive other people when they say sorry to us. Amen. So they grabbed Jesus and they dragged him in front of the religious leaders, the ones who were jealous of him. His trial took all night. He says he will destroy our temple, said one man. He says he is a king, said another. He's a troublemaker, said one and all. None of this was true, of course, but it didn't matter because the leaders had already made up their minds. Jesus was different from them. Jesus wouldn't do what they said. So Jesus would have to die. They beat Jesus. They hit him hard. Then they took away his clothes and put an old robe round his shoulders and jammed a crown of thorns on his head. And while the blood ran down his forehead, they called him names and made fun of him. So you think you're a king, they laughed. Well, look at you now. The soldiers really hurt Jesus. They hurt him on the outside by hitting him and punching him. They rammed a crown of thorns on his head. They made him bleed and they really, really hurt him. But they also hurt him inside as well by insulting him and saying mean things to him. And the thing is that Jesus actually hadn't done anything wrong. He didn't deserve any of that. And all over the world today, there are people who are suffering and are being punished in all sorts of ways for things that they haven't done, things that they haven't done wrong. And there are actually Christians all over the world, people who believe in Jesus, who are in prison or tortured because of, um, because of their beliefs. And actually they haven't done anything wrong apart from believe in Jesus. Um, you might have a nail. If you've got a nail, then I want you to hold that in your hand now. If you haven't got a nail, you could just gently feel your fingernails in your hand. Don't hurt yourself too much, but just so you can just feel the pressure of that. Just be careful. And if you've got a nail, you might like to just feel the end of the nail, but make sure you don't hurt yourself. But let's, as we, as we hold this nail, let's just take a moment of quiet to remember the people all over the world who are suffering and in pain now because of what they believe. Let's pray. As we remember the people who are suffering and in pain, who haven't done anything wrong, Jesus, thank you that you were willing to go through pain inside and out, even though you hadn't done anything wrong. Amen. Then they took a cross made of heavy wood and they laid it on his back. Move along, they shouted, and they led him through the city. Some people cried when they saw him. Others cheered, but all of them followed as he lugged that cross through the city gates and up a nearby hill. When they got to the top, they laid Jesus on the cross and nailed him to it. It hurt so much. Then they raised the cross so that everyone could see, and they left him there to die. A thief hanging next to him was afraid. But Jesus talked to him, 
and helped him feel better. Jesus' mother was there too, standing in the crowd. So Jesus called to his friend, Take care of her for me, will you, John? She's your mother now. Jesus was always thinking about other people. Uh, he did it all through his life. He was always thinking about um, how he could love other people. And it's amazing, isn't it, that even though he was in so much pain and he was suffering so much, even on the cross, he still thought about other people. He had time to make um, a thief beside him on another cross feel a little bit better. And he also did this amazing thing, which was that he said to uh, his best friend, John, will you look after my mum? And he said to his mum, will you look after my best friend? And I wonder if we might be inspired by that, that sometimes when things are difficult, as they are at the moment, we don't always instinctively think unselfishly. We sometimes think about ourselves, but actually Jesus might inspire us to think about other people. Um, I wonder if you've got a plaster. Again, if you haven't got one, don't worry. But if you have got a plaster, just hold it in your hand now, because a plaster is what we put on if we hurt ourselves and if um, things are if we've got a cut or something we put a plaster on don't we so maybe as we think about these plasters as we hold them in our hands we might be able to think about how could we help another person feel better today how could we help another person it might be uh, it's probably somebody in your family because we're not going out at the moment but how could you help your mum or your or your dad or your sister or your brother today so let's just take a moment to think And let's pray together. Jesus, help us to follow your example and think about other people before we think about ourselves. Amen. Most of the faces in the crowd were not kind. You saved other people, some laughed, so why don't you save yourself? Jesus knew why. It wasn't because his enemies had won. It was because God wanted him there to take away all the bad things anyone had ever done. Soon the sky grew dark and the earth shook. It was as if God's own heart was breaking. And then it happened. It's done, Jesus whispered. And in the sadness and the dark, he died. Let's just take a moment to think about Jesus. You might have a cross that you've made yesterday, um, or if you haven't got a cross, you might like to just put your hands over yourself like this, your arms in the shape of a cross. I'm going to hold this cross in my hand. You know, the cross is the place where Jesus shows us that he really, really loves us. And he went through such a lot for us because he loves you and he loves me. So let's just hold this cross in the silence in our hand or make the sign of a cross and just just think about that see if you can say thank you to God in your heart for all that he's done for you let's say a prayer together Jesus, thank you that you love me so much that you died for me. Amen. We're going to sing a song now and just join in if you know it. Um, it's a song about this last day of Jesus' life. Let's sing together.
Jesus is in the tomb, but we still pray this prayer that he taught us. It's really important to keep on praying. So we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer, and I know that you know the action. So let's join in together as we pray. So our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So Jesus is in the tomb and I'm going to blow out this candle now and as I blow out this candle uh, let's pray the prayer that you'll find on your sheet. May the light of God shine from us and the peace of God be with us always. We probably feel quite sad at the end of that service because Jesus is in the tomb. And it is right to feel quite sad today, but we can still feel hope in our hearts and anticipation because um, we know that we are waiting for Sunday. And on Sunday, we celebrate the best, most exciting, most brilliant thing that's ever happened in the whole history of the world. So let's wait with anticipation for Sunday. And on Sunday, you can tune in, it'll be Andy's house that time to celebrate um, Easter Day together. So tune in at 9.30 on Sunday morning. But meanwhile, I hope you have a good day today and let's pray the, pray the final prayer. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>